Circa 2000 BCE, Ibrahim leaves Hajar and Ismail. Circa 2000 BCE, the first construction, Ibrahim السلام, builds the Kaaba with his son Ismail. Circa 1800 BCE, Glenn W. Bowersock assert that Mecca was a major trading outpost. Circa 450 CE, Diodorus Siculus writes, a temple has been set up there which is very holy and revered by all Arabians. Circa 540, Diodorus Siculus writes, by the time of Qusay, the city of Mecca had grown quiet in fame and importance. Circa 570 CE, Abraha launches an attack on the Kaaba, but they are destroyed by the Ababil birds. Circa 570 CE, 10 months after the invasion of Abraham, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. Circa 608 CE, after flash flood, the Kaaba was destroyed. The Quraysh had to rebuild the Kaaba. Circa 683 CE, Yazid ibn Muawiyah besieged Mecca and bombarded it with catapults. Circa 683 CE, after the Kaaba was destroyed by Muawiyah's army, Abdullah ibn Zubair decided to rebuild the Kaaba on the basis of the foundations laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Circa 693 CE, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf destroyed the Kaaba and restored its old structure as the Quraysh had it, which he later regretted. Circa 809 CE, Khalifa Harun al-Rashid wanted to rebuild the Kaaba, but Imam Malik said it would become a toy in the hands of kings. Circa 693 to 1629 CE, the structure remained in the same construction for over 900 years with minor repairs here and there. Circa 1629 CE, heavy storms severely damaged the Kaaba, knocking the walls down. Sultan Murad Khan the Ottoman Khalifa rebuilt the Kaaba for the very last time. 1996 CE, a major reconstruction of the Kaaba took place in 1996. The only original thing left from the Kaaba were the stones. Ibrahim السلام, walked through cultivated land, desert, and mountains until he reached the desert of the Arabian Peninsula and came to an uncultivated valley having no fruit, no trees, no food, no water. The valley had no sign of life after Ibrahim had helped his wife Hajar and child Ismail who was still nursing to dismount he left them with a small amount of food and water, which was hardly enough for two days. He turned around and walked away. Hajar hurried after him asking, Where are you going, Ya Ibrahim? Leaving us in this barren valley? O oh, Ibrahim, where are you going? Leaving us in this valley where there is no person whose company we may enjoy? Ibrahim did not answer her, but continued walking. She repeated, Oh Ibrahim, where are you going? But he remained silent. Finally, she understood that he was not acting on his own initiative. She realized that Allah had commanded him to do this. Did Allah command you to do so? He replied, yes. Then his great wife said, We are not going to be lost, since Allah, who has commanded you, is with us. Ibrahim invoked Almighty Allah thus, O oh, our Lord, I have made some of my offspring to dwell in a valley with no cultivation. 
in order, O our Lord, that they may offer prayers perfectly. So fill some hearts among men with love towards them. And O Allah, provide them with fruits so that they may give thanks. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an narrated, Ismail's mother went on suckling Ismail and drinking from the water. When the water in the water skin had all been used up, she became thirsty. And her child also became thirsty. She started looking at him tossing in agony and she left him for she could not endure looking at him. She found that the mountain of Asafa was the nearest mountain to her on that land. She stood on it and started looking at the valley keenly so that she might see somebody, but she could not see anybody. Then she descended from Asafa, and when she reached the valley, she tucked up her robe and ran in the valley like a person in distress and trouble until she crossed the valley and reached the Al Marwa mountain where she stood and started looking expecting to see somebody but she could not see anybody when Hajar السلام, had run between the mountain seven times she heard a voice as she was standing on Marwa she forced herself to be quiet and she heard the voice again so she called out, You have made me hear your voice. Have you got something to help me? After calling out, she saw an angel at that place where the Zamzam water well now stands. It was Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, and he was digging the earth with either his heel or his wing. Hajar alayhi salam was amazed to see water flowing out of the earth. She raced down to the valley and started pushing the earth around the water to make a basin. And then she filled up her water skin with her hands. As she scooped up the water, it continued to flow. So she said, Zom, Zom, which meant stop, stop. As she was worried the water would run out, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam said to her, Don't be afraid of being neglected. For this is the house of Allah, which will be built by this boy and his father. And Allah never neglects his people. Some of the Bani Jurhum, a Yemeni tribe, were passing through this barren land. When they saw the birds flying around, so they realized that there must be water nearby. Even though they had never seen water during the previous journeys to this part of the desert. They sent some scouts to search for it. And when the scouts found the Zamzam well, they brought the rest of the group to it. Hajar was sitting near the water. They asked her, do you allow us to stay with you? She replied, yes, but you will have no right to possess the water. They agreed to that. The Prophet ﷺ further added, Ismail's mother was pleased with the whole situation as she used to love to enjoy the company of the people. Remember, Hajar السلام, had specifically asked her husband, O Ibrahim, where are you going? Leaving us in this valley where there is no person whose company we may enjoy. She was someone who liked to be around other people. And Allah sent a tribe of people to settle in the middle of the desert so Hajar alayhi salam wouldn't be alone. This group from Bani Jurhum sent word to their families to come and join them. And they settled as permanent residents in Mecca. Ismail alayhi salam grew up among them and learned Arabic from them. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu an narrates that his virtues caused them to love and admire him as he grew up. Now years later, Ibrahim again in reunion with his son Ismail. At that time, there was no place built for the worship of Allah. Ibrahim wished there could be such a place where people would be in peace and concentrate solely for the worship of Allah. His wish was answered 
when Allah ordered him to build the sacred house, the Kaaba. Ibrahim said to Ismail, Oh Ismail, Allah has given me an order. Will you help me execute it? Yes, I will, Ismail said. Allah has ordered me to build a house here, he said, pointing to a hillock higher than the land surrounding it. They went towards the place and started building the foundations of the Kaaba. Ismail brought the stones and Ibrahim built the walls. And when the walls became high, Ismail brought a large stone and put it in front of his father, who stood over it and carried on building. While Ismail was handing him the stones, both of them went on building and going around the Kaaba, saying, O oh, our Lord, accept this service from us. When they finished the building, Angel Jibreel descended from the heaven and showed Ibrahim the rituals of Hajj. Then Ibrahim stepped on the stone and called on people, O people, obey your Lord. This large stone which Ibrahim stepped on is still there to this day near the Kaaba. It is called Maqam Ibrahim. Circa 1800 before the Common Era, scholars such as Glenn W. Bowersock assert that Mecca was a major trading outpost. Circa 450 before the Common Era, the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus writes about Arabia in his book, Bibliotheca Historica, describing a holy shrine, and a temple has been set up there, which is very holy and exceedingly revered by all Arabians. But by the time of Qusay, the city of Mecca had grown quite in fame and importance. Circa 570 Common Era, Abraha al-Habashi was the viceroy to an najashi Negus, king of Abyssinia in Yemen. Abraha saw that the Arabs venerated the Kaaba and went on pilgrimage to it. He became envious and so built a big church in Sana'a so that the Arabs would perform pilgrimage to it. Having heard about that, a man from Banu Kinana entered the church at night and relieved himself in there. When Abraha knew that the man who did that was an Arab from the caretakers of the Kaaba, he swore to destroy the Kaaba. He mobilized a large army and marched on towards the Kaaba. Elephants were among the animals that army used. The people of Mecca fled to the mountains seeking fortification and they did not resist Abraha. Abdul Muttalib went to Abraha to ask him to return his camels which were taken by the army. Abraha said to him, When I saw you, I admired you. But now that you have spoken to me, I have ceased to admire you. You are asking me to return your 200 camels? But you do not ask me not to destroy this house of worship? of your religion and the religion of your fathers? Abdul Muttalib replied, I am the Lord of the camels. As for this house, there is a Lord to protect it. Then Abdul Muttalib chanted, My Lord, the servant has defended his herd. My Lord, defend your herd against their cross. My Lord, it is you against them. If you let them destroy our direction of worship, it is up to you, my Lord. In the morning, Abraha organized the army and prepared his elephant to enter Mecca. When he reached the Muhassir Valley between Muzdalifa and Mina, the elephant knelt down and disobeyed the order to approach Mecca. When directed to the south, east or north, the elephant obeyed and walked. But when directed towards the Kaaba, it knelt down and would not budge at that time Allah the Almighty sent birds in flocks, throwing stones down on the army. Each bird had three stones, one in its beak and two in its feet. These stones went through the soldiers, causing them to perish. Describing the incident, Allah the Almighty says, 
Have you not considered, O Muhammad, how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant? Did he not make their plan into misguidance? And he sent against them birds and flocks, striking them with stones of hard clay. And he made them like eaten straw. This incident heralded the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the same year. Circa 608 Common Era, after a flash flood, the Kaaba was damaged and its walls cracked. It needed rebuilding. This responsibility was divided among the Qurayshi, four tribes. The Prophet Muhammad helped with this reconstruction. Once the walls were erected, it was time to place the black stone, the Hajar al-Aswad, on the eastern wall of the Kaaba. Arguments erupted about who would have the honor of putting back the black stone in its place. A fight was about to break out over the issue when Abu Umayyah, Makkah's oldest man, proposed that the first man to enter the gate of the mosque the following morning would decide the matter. That man was the Prophet. The Meccans were ecstatic. This is a trustworthy one. Al Amin. They shouted in a chorus, This is Muhammad. He came to them and they asked him to decide on the matter. He agreed. Prophet Muhammad proposed a solution that all agreed to putting the black stone on a cloak. The elders of each of the clan held on to one edge of the cloak and carried the stone to its place. The Prophet then picked up the stone and placed it on the wall of the Kaaba. Since the tribe of Quraysh did not have the sufficient funds, this reconstruction did not include the entire foundation of the Kaaba as built by Prophet Ibrahim. This is the first time the Kaaba acquired the cubical shape it has now. Unlike the rectangle shape which it had earlier, the portion of the Kaaba left out is called Hatim now. Circa 683 Common Era. In 64 of Hijra, Yazid ibn Muawiyah launched an army from the Levant under the orders of Al Hussein ibn Namir to fight Abdullah ibn Zubayr. He besieged Mecca and bombarded it by catapult. The Kaaba was damaged. It caught fire and its walls were weakened. But after seven days of siege, Yazid died and the army withdrew to the Levant without having entered Mecca. The command remains in the hands of Abdullah bin Zubayr in Mecca, who decided to rebuild the Kaaba on the basis of the foundations laid by Ibrahim. Ibn Zubayr said, I heard Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her say. The Prophet said, If your people had not quite recently abandoned the ignorance, unbelief, and if I had sufficient provisions to rebuild it, the Kaaba, I would have added five cubits to it from the Hijr. Also, I would make two doors, one for people to enter therein, and the other to exit. Ibn Zubayr said, Today I can afford to do it, and I do not fear the people. He rebuilt the Kaaba on the Prophet Ibrahim's foundation, which meant that the Hatim area was included. The Hatim is the area adjacent to the Kaaba, enclosed by a low semi-circular wall. Circa 693 Common Era. In 74 Hijri, Al-Hajjaj bin Yusuf al thaqafi the known tyrant of that time, with the approval of Umayyad Khalifa, Abdul Malik bin Marwan, demolished what Ibn Zubayr had added to it from the older foundation of Prophet Ibrahim. Restore its old structure as the Quraysh had had it. When Abdul Malik bin Marwan came for Umrah and heard the hadith that it was wish for the Prophet for the Kaaba to be constructed the way Abdullah ibn Zubayr had built it, he regretted his actions. Circa 809, Common Era, Abbasi Khalifa Harun al-Rashid wanted to rebuild the Kaaba the way the Prophet Muhammad wanted and the way Abdullah ibn Zubayr built it. But when he consulted Imam Malik, 
the Imam asked the Khalifa to change his mind because constant demolition and rebuilding is not respectful and would become a toy in the hands of kings. Each one would want to demolish and rebuild the Kaaba. Based on this advice, Harun al-Rashid did not reconstruct the Kaaba. The structure remained in the same construction for 966 years with minor repairs here and there. Circa 1629 Common Era, in the year 1039 Hijri, because of heavy rain, flood, and hail, two of the Kaaba's wall fell down. The northern wall of the Kaaba fell down and also parts of the eastern and western wall. The Yemeni wall was hit, weakened, and knocked down. The ruins of the two other walls, eastern and western, were also knocked down. After this, the Kaaba was rebuilt under the guidance of Sultan Murad Khan, the Ottoman Khalifa. This was the very last time the Kaaba was rebuilt and it is still standing today on these foundations. Reconstruction of the Kaaba in 1996. A major reconstruction of the Kaaba took place between May 1996 and October 1996. This was after a period of about 400 years since Sultan Murad Khan's time. During this reconstruction, the only original thing left from the Kaaba are the stones. All other materials has been replaced, including the ceiling and the roof and its wood.